Welcome everyone to a new gameplay series on Pike and Shot campaigns. This will be the actual campaign. So I did a, a historical thing, I actually cut it off short. We only did two battles from the English Civil War. But now let's actually get into what I think is probably a little bit more fun. Um, I'm going to go with the Pike and Shot era, which is the more general one. Um, you can choose so many different things from here. And basically I don't have a good idea of which one I want to do which is why I'm choosing Pike and Shot, because it's kind of the most general. And the one I'm going to choose inside of here is just basically I randomized a few times and I did a test um, with the first combination that made any sense to me, which was uh, Sweden versus Russia. Now, I absolutely don't mind. I mean, even this one, maybe the French versus the Swiss is more interesting. I, I, I don't know. The thing is, I don't know enough about the different sides to be able to choose... Um, it doesn't, I don't have enough information to make one choice more interesting than the other. So that's why I'm just going to choose the very first thing that that came to me, which was, uh, let's see if I can just get it. This is how I did it. I just randomized like this, in this manner. And eventually it came down to uh, Swedish. Now can I get the Swedish here? Uh, let's just go to the Swedish. Okay, there it is. And I don't remember which era it was, but maybe this one? Ah, yeah, this is it. Okay, good. Wow, so you can be up against the better Russians? I'd prefer not to, no. <laughs> so very good. Uh, we'll be a, the Swedish going up against the Russians. Um, and I will manually deploy my own forces. And uh, yeah, that, so that's the all the setup that we actually have. There's a lot of these um, pop-ups. I'm not getting rid of them because sometimes I might need them, but let's see. What do we want to do here? Um, current tax value is 64, or 75 for this one. 100, 100. So I want to defend the higher tax ones. If they go in here, they might actually suffer. Okay, it'll give me it again. I probably should just turn this off, but 863. So they will have enough supply points to go into here. Okay, let's just defend across the front. Makes the most sense to me. Um, Oh, uh, okay, we'll just create a new army. Let's create an, our first army in, I'm not even going to try, George Sculping. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take Pike and Shot. I, I like the Pike and Shot the best. So even now, if I can get more of those, I would, but we're not able to. We, we don't have very much. Basically, this first army is kind of set for us, and maybe this is one of the things you can choose by selecting a nation that has a little more customization. I mean, there's a lot of different categories here, but in, it's unfortunate that you can't, you start with um, a lot of the choices picked for you. And I would prefer to be just like able to choose a lot of different um, pike and shot if I wanted, for example. So what am I missing here? Let's get medium guns and uh, some poorly trained pike and shot. So we'll have to take care of these guys. They won't be, um, they'll be a little more vulnerable. And that's good. That's our first army. Okay. Um, now we're just going to basically make the exact same army in uh, the other two places. Actually, let me cancel out of this one real fast because I don't know. The hills apparently are modifying the amount of forces I can make. So that's interesting. We might have to take that into account when we're actually modifying or um, making the last army. Uh, what else do I want? So we have 28 left over here. Which means either light guns. I don't really want light guns. Oh, we can get more. Oh, good. Ah, damn, 28. That's the worst, though. Um, okay, so what if we take away these guys? We have 58. Which is not a super lot. Hmm. I wish I could get another just normal pike and shot. But it looks like... Oh. Mm. Okay, I was missing the Dragoons. I like the Dragoons. I used to hate them. But I've, I've kind of found out that if you use them correctly, they're a strong, very strong unit. So, they must be used correctly, though. That's the key. <laughs> okay, so now we have the remaining of our treasury, about one-third of what we started with, <clears throat> which we'll make over here. And I'm not, I don't need the hills to be as, uh, as strongly defended, to be honest, because um, uh, you start with a defensive bonus in the hills anyway. Nonetheless, I guess we'll be doing more or less the same thing. Dragoons, a medium gun. Uh, okay, if we get one of those, we we'll only have 37 left. So what do we have? 51, damn, we're just short. So this is problematic. 
Maybe in the hills we don't need the medium gun. We should still get, I think, pike and shot. Yeah, and then we can get a poorly trained pike and shot and have six left over. Okay, that makes sense to me. So we have very, a very small amount of treasury left. And uh, at least we can defend our uh, front forces, our for front three uh, provinces well. Okay, so we can end this turn. I don't think you have the ability to move at all. I think it takes two to move anywhere, and we only have one action point, which allows us to split the army if we want, but I don't want to because I actually probably want to consolidate. So we'll end the turn and see what happens. Okay, uh, you can see that I'm on playing on medium difficulty. I didn't show this, but maybe I can show it. No, I guess I can't. Um, I'm playing in the middle one, the the third option of five, so just dead in the middle. And even this, some people would consider the harder difficulty level, but we'll see if we can get by somehow. Now, what do I want to do? Um, we only have 440 points here compared to 860. 584, wow, good God. Wow, we, we really are <laughs> slightly disadvantaged. 600 to 800, 600 to 800, and then uh, 500 to 900. Good God. Well, I don't think you can raise an army in any time except for early spring. Oh, you can. Did this, but we don't have any money to do so. Okay, so I guess we'll have to play defensively at first. So I will just end my turn. I mean, one thing I could do is just go aggressive, but you take attrition, you take attrition going uh, into enemy provinces. The downside of letting them come to us is that our current tax value will be reduced. If the enemy comes into your territory and holds it, they kind of pillage the land and they reduce your tax value. So there's a lot of it, a lot of interesting mechanics all at work on this strategic map. Basically, if you push your advantage, if you push your attack, you reduce their long term, but you lose short term because you'd be taking attrition. I, I guess we just don't have the forces to push, so we'll have to stay defensive. Okay, so battle has been joined. This is the two to one odds. Um, it's not looking good, but we'll see what we can do. And it's really important now. So, in the historical campaigns, one campaign did not affect one battle did not affect the neck. Importantly, here. When we uh, finish this, getting units off the field without losing too many, even if we lose the battle, is really important because we need to save them to fight another day. Um, the balance of forces is 4,200 foot to 4,000 foot and 1,300 horse to 3,000 horse. So a lot of their points advantage is in horse and you know what? What better place to do uh, a defensive action against horses, against cavalry, than in the hills? At least I, I suspect. So our auto resolve chance is 46%. That's not too promising, but we'll go ahead and start this battle. <clears throat> All right, we can get an overview of our forces here, but I, I guess since we, I don't know if people are coming into this series new or not, I, I suppose we'll take a moment here. Uh, Pike and shot, this is where you have your front third, our pikemen. To defend and then the rear lines are all musketeers so you can see over here 66% musketeers 34% pike one third two thirds um, they have good combat ratings and they also have good shooting ratings so they're really a solid all-around unit um, they're at, at the same time they are the jack of all trades therefore master of none so sometimes if you need a, a specific strategy and you have to use pikemen they they'll be less than ideal because you know, in every role they're good, but in no role are they great. Dragoons, I found, are phenomenal ranged units. You can go in there, they can disrupt units, they can uh, put pressure on, you know, the enemy where the enemy is not expecting pressure. Because they can sit in rough terrain or anything, they have great movement. <clears throat> it's really hard to pin them down because of their horses. They can basically just, uh, they ride, they dismount, they shoot, and then they ride away. So. <clears throat> Our horses are nothing spectacular. They're slightly better than the Russians, I believe, but we'll probably be using these um, to confront the Russian cavalry directly because one-on-one, -on -one, I think we're we're advantaged. So if we can find like little holes, I, this does not look like an amazing defensive terrain. In fact, anyways, the horses we don't have any um, ranged capability with our horses, whereas the Russians are going to be using bows with their horses. It's a uh, 
<clears throat> Genghis Khan all over again. Hey, Pike and Shot again. This is the same. We have Pike and Shot here. This is slightly better Pike and Shot. So uh, these have light guns, which increases their shooting to 64 from 48. Um, even their melee is a little higher. So these are just in general slightly superior Pike and Shot. And then we have four of these reserve Pike and Shot, which is okay, not spectacular. We'll have to use these uh, at not at the fragile points, just at support points. Maybe we'll support them with the cavalry. Then we have unar unarmored horse and veteran unarmored horse. Of course, uh, armor's better, but I'm not fully sure what the impact of armor is. And maybe somebody will even let me know in the comments. So that explains the uh, general troop compositions, and the Russians will be more or less the same troop composition. So the enemy is offering fair and open battle. Well, I don't know how fair it is, but it is open. <clears throat> so, now deployment mode. Mode. What can we try to take advantage of here? Yeah, see the hill up here is where we would want to be, but I suspect we can't deploy there. In fact, no, we can't deploy anywhere near that. Which renders our advantage of being in the hills... Well, I, I guess it mitigates our advantage. Just trying to see where we might be able to gain some kind of... Uh, Ter uh, terrain advantage. <clears throat> Looks like here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it drops down to open ground here. Actually, it's high ground for them there, which is bad for us, but... Ah, God. They put us in a ravine. You know, you'd think as defender, you would be able to get to pick, or that they should pick for you pretty um, good defensive terrain, but this is not... I would not consider this good. Hmm. I mean, we also have a really small deployment zone. Okay, our Dragoons are the only exception. They usually do get a ride around a little bit further than the other... Uh, I mean, deploy a little bit further away. I, honest to God, I'm not sure how to deal with this. Two to one. They will be attacking us, so we can let them come to us, but we don't even have a gun. It's not like we can sit there and pelt them with artillery the whole time. Okay, well, let's just give it our best shot. Lots of rough ground, which we'll probably have to use. I think we just hold our cavalry at the cusp over here. So the veteran horse will be in the front. We'll have the veteran unarmored. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let's stick our normal cavalry forces here. Maybe they'll hold this hilltop. be very difficult. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we'll try that. No, I guess they'll have to deploy here, facing this way. Deploy facing this way. One, two, three, so one. Diagonal, diagonal. Good. Looks about right. Then we have reserve pike and shot, which have these uh, multicolored units. And the non-ones are just solid blue. Hmm, I don't... The only advantage I could see us trying to make use of is putting our troops along this road line. Unfortunately, it's at the bottom of a hill. So even that one small advantage is kind of mitigated. We should probably try to take advantage of this rough terrain. Or we have... Okay, maybe we can make something with this. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is impossible. We might as well concede the first battle, right? Uh, we gotta use the rough terrain to our advantage. One, two, three. One, one, two. Okay, I think we'll just defend straight forward then. <clears throat> yeah, that'll give us a better chance to shoot yeah, okay, this is, I think this is reasonable. Deploy these guys here. They'll deploy it to, to our flank. Which will be here. So we'll get them like this. This guy will deploy here, facing forward. Um, okay, we probably need... 
<clears throat> Let's get a strong guy holding the flank. And three weak, two weak right here. One weak right, no, this should be one strong. And then one weak to hold here. Only has to hold one corner. Hmm, I guess a weak in the middle. Do we have any weak cavalry? No, okay, so where do we, we have veteran, veteran. That's gonna hold this side well. They probably won't even be used, so let's put this guy on this side. Okay, fine, fair enough. This is our veteran unit, in fact, so I want our veterans to be in front. Let's get this veteran unarmored over here. And this normal horse right here. So these guys are gonna deploy, I think, this way. Okay, just go in and hold this ridge. Basically, I'll probably have this guy deploy right here, facing exactly that way so that he can pivot and face whatever direction the threat comes in. Maybe like right here. And this guy will just be covering his, his flank. Now the armored ones are the best to lead with. Yeah, so this is perfect. That veteran horse is probably the best to lead with. And this guy is going to turn there instead. Okay, so we have our idea. <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to work. Where the dragoon's going to sit? Probably right here. In the nice rough ground, which will protect them. And uh, maybe even up here, just to give them more time to uh, be aggressive against the enemy. Okay, so... Not high hopes. Not very high hopes. Okay, they have a gun. Hmm. Is it a light gun? It is. So it only has a range of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So we just don't do we don't get near that and one two one two three perfect i think we can sit here just fine i can't really see their vision but that's okay i'm pretty sure that this okay so we have oh the tatars tatars <clears throat> these are uh bow swordsmen they have 68 and 31 so you can see that our dragoons are almost as good in melee as them so they are uh, some kind of skirmishing unit um, on the left flank, we have the Dragoons, okay? So we'll want to counter them with our own Dragoons, really, ideally. Because those are basically very disruptive to any kind of normal infantry. And obviously bad for horses. Then this is the traditional cavalry I was talking about. They're using bows, so you see 83 and 30. Compared to us, whoops, compared to us, much worse in terms of melee, but they have ranged and we don't. So it's best for us to close the range immediately. All right, so let's just move into these positions that I kind of already know where I want to go. It might be sensible for us to even try to push our advantage to the hill <clears throat> before they get there, because it, the onus is on them. We don't have to do anything. It's them who has to come and route us. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this guy's gonna be dis disorganized, but just he'll deal with it for one turn. Okay, uh, let's see, move this guy forward as well. Um, Dragoons first. I'll move this guy this way, that'll help us to possibly compensate for the effect of the enemy Dragoons by moving him, shifting him over to the left flank. But I would prefer him to shoot the Tatars. <clears throat> yeah, and holding this hill over here is what the cavalry is going to be for. So let's get them over there. Like this. That seems good to me. Has anybody not moved? No. So now we'll see what they, how they react. Hmm. No reaction. Okay, well, <clears throat> that gives us yet another turn to advance closer. I don't think they have any light forces. Okay, these musketeers are very uh, difficult to deal with. They're only slightly worse in uh, melee combat. First, my pike and shot. But they are slightly 
superior in ranged. Then they have their normal pike and shot reserve right here. Cavalry. Oh, these are actually quite difficult to deal with. Now these, they don't... They don't seem as difficult as I remember. Lighter, equipped horse who rely on carbines fired at a distance to weaken the enemy prior to a charge. Yeah, these are not as impressive. They're, they're not the ones I remember. Okay. Yeah, they do have a lot of horsemen. Good goodness. <laughs> yeah. If we move too close, they will they will be triggered. They will uh, come off to attack us. But I mean, ah oh, man, it would be so great if I could get over to this hilltop. Is it possible? We might as well go for it, you know? I sometimes, I mean, uh, let's just go for it. Which means we have to shift everyone in. It's good, they, they should only be able to, um, it will slow them down a bit, but actually they, they shouldn't have any problems going through that. Yeah, we'll, we'll just make a, <laughs> we'll make a break for it. I don't know if we'll get there in time, I doubt it actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I... One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so they can't... Should be safe doing this. Oh, I would have him turn, because we want him to get him out of there. Yep, like this. Um, okay, well, let's just pretend we're going to do this. I don't know if we will in the end or not, but we'll go ahead and pretend we will. <clears throat> Let's see. I guess we can have the Dragoons come and block. And have them face that direction, which is the direction I assume an attack would come from. Just in case they have a chance to fire. It's important that we turn them in the right way. So now at this point, I guess we leave the cavalry still here. But, let's see, 75, 100? Yeah, yeah, we can just leave them here. We're ready to accept an uh, enemy cavalry charge, which would have to be upslope. Otherwise they will come against our... we want our veterans actually to be there. So we'll get our veterans over here, maybe even right here. I don't know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> Hopefully they give us another turn. Has everyone moved? Good, they are not moving, this is good. We will likely need that extra turn. Okay, the important thing is, can we get here? No. I really wish we could have gotten there. Still go there. Okay. We don't have line of sight, very good. Okay, that's still perfect. So we'll turn and Kind of pin down this area. If they choose to move in there, our Dragoons will get a shot. Cavalry is going to move around to protect the flank, I guess. Makes sense to me. Okay, so we are going to try to take this high ground then. And it looks like so far we're going to be successful at doing it. Yeah, we'll leave them facing that way. Actually, no. They can't get close enough next turn, so we'll just turn and face them this way. Because that is the direction they will go. Okay, so we're pulling them all back over here. So this is going to be a really an isolated cavalry group over here. But they're, they're a strong group. In fact, we can even do this fallback thing if I want, which I think I do. So these are unarmored, these are normal. So we want these guys probably to fall back. It won't cause any cohesion loss because we're not close enough to the enemy, so it doesn't take that into account. We'll have these guys fall back, and these guys will move over here, and that's where they will prepare to defend against uh, an opposing cavalry charge. Okay, good. So that'll be our right flank, holding down hopefully some other force, but we'll, it looks like we'll be able to get to the top of this hill. The, if the Dragoons can hold down the forces, should help us out a lot. So we'll just start pushing. 
it's a little unfortunate that the rough ground is like almost happening immediately on top. We don't have any light foot, so oh yeah, we do dragoons. Considered light foot when they're dismounted, so we could move them in here, but. Yeah, actually we will, <laughs> as soon as we get an opportunity. So let's see, anybody not move? No. So if we have one more turn... Ah, moved a little too close for the guns. They are moving in. They got to the place where I would have gone myself. That's very smart. Okay, good. So at least we were able to get out of there, though. So let's just start pushing up people one at a time. Now, if we wanted, we could sit, turn here, and engage this Dragoons, but I don't think we want to. In fact, what we'll probably end up doing is charging them. Because if we charge them, we will be able to engage them with our cavalry if they decide to um, stick and fight. I just want to push them out of here. Hmm. Get these guys over here, and I think these guys will be the ones that I turn and fight with. They should be shot. They aren't. Oh, this is weird. I wonder why the line of sight is blocked. To me, that's not blocked. Huh. Okay, well, well that's good to know. Wish I had known that before, of course, but that's okay. Okay, so we'll turn... let's just charge. Oh, that did not work for us at all. Wow, that was very unexpected. Hey, well, at least we can shoot now. We still got a shot off. Strange. Turn off line of sight. Has anybody not moved? Okay, these guys. So yeah, let's get this organized the way I want, which is you to face this way, you to face this way, and you to face this way. Okay, good. That's how I want it, is in this formation. Ah, you guys haven't moved. Okay, very good. So... Veteran unarmored. I think we'll leave the veteran armored unarmored right here. Holding that. This guy is probably going to move around to attack. He'll be like our charger. Goes to the rear lines and disrupts things. Yeah. That's probably how we'll do it. Okay. Here they come. We got just about as far as we could. Interesting. Right, here they come. Okay, I think we're winning this. I think we're winning that. I think both of those we won, so that's after a, you know a poor first start. That's okay. We don't need those. Dra those dragoons are not like integral to our uh, our plan. So we move this guy, and he needs to start turning to face. Uh, we'll get this guy up to the high ground over here, I guess. <laughs> okay, you as well need to move one. Probably need you. Oh, this is reserve. We don't want reserves holding the peak there. Okay, I can get the reserves. Hmm, how do we how do we want to do this? This is rough as well. So what where do we want to hold our line here? This guy faces this way, diagonal. This guy faces diagonal. So this should be a reserve unit here. Which means this guy probably needs to stay where he is. So you actually have to go in there, I'm sorry, but you know, eventually you'll be back over here. So we have this guy diagonal. This guy is going to be where he is, essentially. So let's just have him turn where he is. That means that he'll be holding the... Oh, interesting. Probably he should be even be here. And actually, no. Yeah, we want a, a main, not a reserve, here. Which means we want a reserve here. 
We'll just start getting this guy to start pivoting the way we want him. And we need one more up the hill. So the rest of these guys, I, I wonder if we can charge this. Yeah, we will win this, so this is fine. Um, probably not the best idea in that we don't want our units trapped here, but that's okay. Okay, so we'll get these guys way over here. This will probably be... A, so a gunner might be the one we put on the 125 right here, or maybe right here, 150. That seems fine to me, to just be able to shoot as people are coming over. Because we're going to hold the slope as well. Now, I guess we already have to charge these guys. They will withdraw. That's okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. As long as the unarmored aren't taking hits, I'm I'm happy. So I don't think we do anything here. Just we just pivot. On the next turn, the veteran horse probably will be attacked by the ta Tatars again. I have like conflicting ways my brain is telling me how to pronounce that word. But uh, we'll go with Tatars for now. Who hasn't moved? You. Yeah, this is interesting as well. It's a much bigger difference if we can move to this position, actually. So we'll do that. We'll hold here. Okay. Okay, that's good. So this is bad only because they're going to continue to approach. We need to break the Dragoons quickly in order to free up our forces here. And honest to God, this Reserve Pike is probably lost. But that's okay. <laughs> in order to free our Dragoons, it might actually be worth it. So they're now slightly disadvantaged, which is good. And that was good. That was very good. So that means our um, pike and shot is actually going to be able to, to get out. We'll actually will be free. Or at least we'll be able to sit there and die by giving... By, but we'll buy time for us to get everyone else into place. Oh, he's disrupted. Yeah, okay. I think we just use him to <laughs> these guys to buy time. The Dragoons will recover if we give them enough time. So that's not a huge concern. Hmm... Should I be pushing both my cavalry over onto this hill? Maybe. Okay, so let's get this guy into the position he's going to be in. This guy is... I think we even hold like this. Let's do it this way. <clears throat> I like that better. And then one right here. So we're holding a nice defensive line. And these guys are just going to be... Oh, can we turn here? No. So we're just going to do a diagonal line. Okay, get that straightened out next time. And this guy's starting his pivot. Get somebody to hold here. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so he can back up. Or we could have him charge basically the Dragoons in there. It's tough to say what's the best choice there. Can we get to them? No. Alright, well, now we unfortunately have to support. <laughs> and that's 100 ground, so we put ourselves in a really terrible spot. I don't know how to deal with Tatars. I guess the best way to deal with it is to loop another flanking cavalry around. I didn't do that. We'll have to learn from our mistakes. Okay, well, we uh, might as well just... This flank is starting to push forward, so let's get them more into position. Okay. I think we will advance with these guys. It's going to be so hard for anybody to get around this flank that we might as well charge. Okay. Yeah, we should do something with these guys. What do we do? Okay. Okay, we fragmented them. That's good. Unfortunately, these guys are exposed a little bit. They won't be charged because these guys can only move like one, one, two, or something like this. So we might have gotten a little cover from the forest. I'm not sure if everyone will be able to attack them, but yeah, we, <laughs> this unit is probably not going to stay around for the rest of the, the battle. 
I'm expecting him to route at some point. Okay, how do we want to deal with this, though? Well, if we can hold the cavalry in check, we'll be in good shape. So maybe what I should do is this. Yeah, uh, I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, so they, he kind of tucked himself in. That's nice. They're starting to fire at us, but we should have the advantage here. Alright, we'll, we'll be able to charge somebody in this turn to, to get our veteran horses into some cover. <laughs> if you're in, um, you know, it's just impossible for somebody who's uh, being engaged in melee to be attacked. You know, friendly fire is a big thing. So. Oh, they're fragmented. What I'm trying to say is, putting them into an attack with somebody is actually going to be an advantage. It's actually an advantage. How do we deal with these guys? Okay, so we'll be at 100. We will have the advantage on any of these. So let's probably take the Russian Cavalry, who is the best other unit. Or should we take these guys? This will pre present us the smallest flanks. So let's do this. Yeah, we will. We should crush. We can't because it's not a priority target. We can do this one, though. Okay, well, let's do this one then. Not the best start, but that's okay. Let's get this guy up the hill to support. We should be able to win if we can get into close combat with them. So let's stay just on the hill. Like this, I think. Okay, there we go. So we'll just wait, <laughs> see what they do. Yeah, I know you haven't moved. I don't know if there's any place for you to move. 100, 100, 150. I think it might actually be better for them to face this way because it looks like the angle will be... I think that's going to be um, the full arc of fire versus the half arc of fire. Okay, so if anybody else needs to move... Alright, let's see what happens here. We're winning that. We were greatly... Uh, they are greatly disadvantaged against us, but unfortunately it didn't mean... Oh, oh, those guys are routing. That's fine. We expected this, right? Okay, that was... Oh, it should have been okay. Yeah, they're disadvantaged. Okay, so we're still okay there. I mean, we could do a flanking attack on this guy, but it would put us into the dis disordered area. 
is why I said it's okay that those guys are routing. Because I suspected that this would be the case. Okay, good. Should be good. Oh, God. Even though we're on... I guess we're on even terms now. But we should be advantaged. 112 versus 136. A little confused about that. Okay, well, let's blast the hell out of these guys. <laughs> That's it. That's all we can do. These guys are getting ready. Uh, we can wait maybe one more turn. No, maybe not. Close enough to charge. So we'll have to wait. Oh, we could charge this one, though. And this would be a win. Well, let's do it, then. Now, all I want to do is... Put ourselves into a position where we can get to this guy if he tries to flank us. There. So if he goes one dink, I want to be able to uh, hit him from the back. So we're close enough to engage this guy next turn, and we should be able to win. Okay, so that was good. Uh, I think we have to charge these guys, even though we're now we're in terrible shape. So the best thing for us to do is actually to get out of here, but there's no way we can get out of here. Huh. Okay, we can win this one. We won't be winning the turns after this, but I think I had to do that. Hmm. Unfortunately, the unarm unarmored horse, if we put them here, which is where I want them to protect the flank, uh, we're just they're just gonna take a, a whole turn of fire. And I need to, I want to protect against this. So I'm going to leave them here. I don't know if we really handled that situation the best there. But honestly, I don't know what the best way of handling the situation was. Okay, so now this is what our Dragoons are for. Is just wearing down these troops. Okay, they broke. That's fine. I'm still, I'm still okay with that. The job of the Dragoons is to basically do what they, they've been doing. <laughs> okay, we'll turn them face. I think that that'll be the direction we'll have to fire at. And the rest are just in support. You're in support. Okay. Well, okay, here we go. I don't like the way things have gone so far, but... why they're advantaged against us. Okay, there we go. That's something. We should be winning this one. Okay, we are. Russian turn. This should be good for us. We should be advantaged. Yeah, they're disadvantaged because they're going uphill. There it is, uphill. Um, I guess attached guns gives us some advantage. So, we have the advantage there. Now, they're disorganized when they're in there, but they are kind of in cover. Okay, here they come. That's ex what I expected. Okay, that's this is good. So we're winning the cavalry fight. We're winning that cavalry fight. They're disrupted, unfortunately. Damn it. Holy sh Nikes. We lost the right side very quickly. Okay, but they exposed a flank to us. We'll be able to flank attack them. And we will, of course. Try to win that one back. Thirteen, sixteen, ten. That's a lot of damage, unfortunately. That guy stayed, so that's perfect. Okay, we're still slightly advantaged. We're winning that one. That's good. Uh, that's okay that they dispersed. I think we get most of the units back that way. Disrupted this guy as well. So the right flank is bad, but the left flank is good. 
so far, not looking good. <laughs> okay, well, we have to do this, obviously. Good, they broke. That's actually fantastic. Okay, so this is good. We, we've... <laughs> we didn't neutralize it over there at all, but... See, we have... We're routing here, and we're routing here. And unfortunately, their cavalry did the right thing and stuck to our veterans. I want them back after this battle, but... Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this. This is a huge win for us. Yep, they're disrupted immediately. Just to get these pieces off the fight. Now, here comes the important thing, which is, uh, yeah. The pike and shot battles. So we actually can't turn, but that's okay. We'll just fire it like this angle. Still doing a lot of damage, actually. Can fire it. Oh, we can fire at this guy. Fantastic. Oh, nice. I think at this point we do get this guy to go forward, so we can just fire at this unit. And we'll get this guy onto the field as well, just because we want everyone to be able to fire. So we've created a nice little wall for ourselves on that side, since most of the attack is coming this way. I wonder if this counts as a cohesion test if there's nobody in range. Because I actually want to shift this guy over to the south. Yeah, we'll just turn him this way. Well, we're fine over here now. So let's get him to plug the gap in the south. <clears throat> okay, good. That looks good. I'm pretty happy about everything, actually. I think that's everything I wanted to do. They're still shooting the pike and shot, which are already losing. Are already routing, I mean. 45 minutes. I guess we're going to have to call a break to this video. I was hoping, really, really hoping. Huh, that's weird. They're slightly disadvantaged, but we lost a few more men. Fragmented there. And now it's the Russian turn. We'll play that out. I was really hoping we could finish this battle first, but not so. We might as well charge, even though, because it, it is a slight downhill for us, which is good. Break? No, not yet. Would really like for some of my guys to rally. <laughs> there we go. Finally. So that's actually perfect timing, because we could charge the flank. I don't actually know if we can. Now we should break into this guy? Do it. Turn. Ah, damn. Oh, we did. Perfect. Ah, that's what I wanted. That guy should just break immediately, basically. Okay, so it's our turn. But I'm going to call this video to a close here. Eh, things could be better. I would not disagree. But... Aside from basically just totally wiping out on this flank, and I might even get this guy to try to pursue. <laughs> just to get him away from all these other uh, units who want to kill him. Because <clears throat> he's going to be flanked almost no matter what he does. So we need to keep him at a run. In fact, maybe what I'll do... Actually, I think the best thing for me to do is try to get this guy. That's the furthest we can move as well, which is good. We want to keep moving as far as we can. <laughs> Just to get away from everyone. Okay, so we'll just do that. But yeah, here, I'll call this video to a close, and we'll pick this up in the next video. Uh, these will be, I guess, pretty long videos, just because these battles take a long time. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'll keep the videos down to only about 40 minutes, but you can expect longer, more relaxed videos, I think. So thanks for watching episode one, and because it is episode one, as you know, if you've watched me for a while, the only time I'll ever ask you to uh, press thumbs up or you know press like on a video is the very first one in the series, just so that it's visible um, when you search for it on YouTube. But uh, so if you do that, I would greatly appreciate it. If not, who cares? No, no big deal. So I'll catch you back for episode two. Thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.